Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the mechanism of myocardial infarctions, which is the technical term for what's called a heart attack. And most of you probably have a very good idea what a heart attack is. We know that a heart attack can be fatal, as in inducing death of the individual. But if the person lives, they're going to forever live with a diminished heart or cardiac efficiency. And we want to talk about what leads ultimately to this drop in cardiac efficiency upon living or eventual death from the heart attack. We know where the heart is and we know what the function of the heart is. The function of the heart is to pump blood throughout the entire body to supply nutrients to all the peripheral tissues, muscles, lungs, kidneys, liver, brain, everything. Okay. And the way that the heart pumps blood is through its musculature, which is cardiac muscle. And the cardiac muscle collectively in the heart is referred to as the myocardium. Okay. This is the layer of the heart that's actually going to be the contractile unit of the heart. And being contractile unit, uh, that has to receive a lot of blood flow. And the blood flow to the myocardium is mainly supplied by what are called coronary arteries. And the heart will be healthy, in particular the myocardium will be healthy, as long as there's normal blood flow through those coronary arteries to that muscle, to that myocardium. And as long as there's blood flow to the myocardium, you have delivery of oxygen, you have delivery of glucose, other materials like lactate that the heart can use uh, to provide its own energy, and that myocardium will continue to contract, pumping blood in a healthy manner, etc., etc. But what happens if these coronary arteries become a blocked, or we call occluded in some way? For example, in this picture denoted C right here, we have narrowing of the coronary artery. What you see here in this artery is that you have an atherosclerotic plaque that's developing. It's not occluding the entire blood vessel here, but you can see about half of it is now uh, blocked off by this plaque, which we see in the yellow color that reduces the blood flow through this coronary artery. Whereas here, where it's not obstructed by any occlusion or plaque, we see that there's gonna be more blood that's able to flow through this artery than there is over here on the right, okay? So in the case of a narrowed coronary artery by really any mechanism, although plaque is very common, that means you have diminished blood flow to that area of the heart. Now, this does not mean that every single area of the heart, all the pieces of myocardium of the heart are equally affected. In fact, usually only portions of the heart are affected because there are different branches of the coronary arteries that supply different regions of the heart. But this diminished blood flow, in any case, reduces the oxygen delivery to that region of the heart, to that region of the myocardium. And so, when you have lower oxygen delivery, remember oxygen is what's used by those cells' mitochondria, and that allows them to produce ATP. In fact, the mitochondria, remember, is the maximum source of ATP, particularly in cardiac muscle. And so if there's less oxygen going to a particular area of the mitocardium, then there's going to be a diminished aerobic capacity of that region because the mitochondria are starved of oxygen. And in doing so, you're gonna have diminished ATP availability. And so ultimately, that region of the myocardium that is starved for blood is gonna have diminished capacity to generate ATP. That's a problem for multiple reasons. One, obviously the myosin in the heart muscle itself, in the sarcomere, has to have ATP to contract. But the major problem is that ATP is required to maintain electrolyte balance on either side of the, of the plasma membrane of these cells, the sarcolemma. That is between the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. And so when you have inability to regulate that via the sodium potassium pump, you have electrolyte imbalance and ultimately that causes the cardiac muscle to fail in that region specifically. And when that happens, you have necrosis. Now, necrosis can be contrasted significantly from apoptosis. Apoptosis is a controlled cell death that's a natural part of life. Sometimes cells get old, they get damaged, they have to be taken out. Okay? They have to be gotten rid of. And apoptosis is generally what accomplishes that. However, if you starve a cell in an unnatural fashion, such as this, you're starving it of blood, oxygen, and ultimately ATP, the cell undergoes what's called necrosis. And in necrosis, you basically have lysis of the cell. It really just dies, it's not a controlled death, and it bursts. 
In fact, upon heart attack or myocardial infarction, we can observe elevated levels of anaerobic markers in the blood, such as lactate dehydrogenase, creatine kinase, and also creatinine. Ultimately, when those cardiac muscle cells or the myocardium dies, it never recovers completely because instead of being regenerated as cardiac muscle, it instead is replaced by scar tissue. Let's take a look at this image right here. So this is a cross section of the heart. Over here, this chamber right here in white, this is one of the atria. And over here is the ventricle on the right side of this image. And we see a very thick muscular wall over here. This is the myocardium of the ventricle. And up here on the top, this is where we have what's called infarcted tissue. Really just infarcted tissue of the heart just means that that tissue was starved of blood flow and oxygen and ultimately ATP production, and the cell underwent necrosis and died. That's the infarction. Okay? Infarction basically in layman's terms just means that tissue died, although that term is generally re reserved for the heart. But notice in this region right here, it no longer has the same color as the rest of the ventricle wall. And that's because this is scar tissue over here. Scar tissue is not cardiac muscle. It's not muscle at all. Scar tissue cannot contract. So even though you still have all this tissue over here that can still contract and pump blood, over here it's damaged and it's scar tissue and it's non-contractile. So instead of all of this being contractile, you now have a, a, a diminished percentage of this wall that's contractile. And so there's going to be less force generated by the ventricle, less blood pumped overall, and so you have a diminished cardiac efficiency. And the diminished cardiac efficiency is due to the death of that muscle and its replacement by scar tissue, which can no longer con can contract as cardiac muscle normally would. And one other thing to consider is that potential stem cells that could generate more cardiac muscle tissue are completely insignificant. They do exist, but they never recover the same cardiac efficiency, not even close. Now what can also happen is if the heart attack is to a great enough extent, if you have enough of this tissue that's actually damaged to where the heart cannot pump a, a sufficient blood to the rest of the body, that will ultimately result in death of the individual. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of an MI or myocardial infarction or heart attack. And please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.